because of a lot of the religious teaching we've had that uh, has hindered us to receive. So we need to kind of jump in that and kind of retrain our brains. But I want to mark this down. We're going to talk about this. Number one, these are some steps, so take notes. Number one, if you want to get ahead with God, you've got to stop the chaos. You know, the Bible says that God's voice is that still, quiet voice. You know, Jesus had to get away to a, what? Quiet place. But when things are chaotic and things are in chaos, you know, it's sometimes hard to hear. And I was living a life of chaos, and you might be as well. So, number one, we got to stop the chaos, and you need to understand how that works. About three weeks ago, I had a, a dream in the night about a young lady that sings on our platform that uh, in the dream, she had cancer. And I didn't know that, but in the dream, she had cancer. And in the dream, I laid my hands on her, and God showed me how to deal with that. And I thought, well, should I call her, you know, because God, I knew, it, I knew what to do. I knew what to do, but should I call her? Should I? And I really felt in my spirit, don't call her. Now, she goes to over our PAL campus, so I didn't see her very often. And uh, so that's three weeks ago. And so this Saturday night, I didn't know she was here, but I was on the front row and we were in worship. The anointing of God was strong. And all of a sudden I had this urgency in my spirit that I was to pray for people to pray against cancer. So I came up front and I said, hey, anyone have cancer, been diagnosed with cancer? I'd like you to come up front. And uh, here comes this young lady. I didn't know she's even here. She comes around here. She comes up front. And so I, I knew exactly what to do because I'd already seen it. God showed me exactly what to do. So I want to help you understand, but here's, here's what he said to do. He said, you go up and lay your hands on her, and you say these words. I'm just, these are the exact words he said to say to her. He said, get out. Get out. No, you don't. Get out of here. Get out. That's what he said. You got to stop the chaos. The enemy is going to take you on a ride. He wants to keep you in chaos. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy, and you have to stop him. And you'll have to know how to do that. So I appreciate the Holy Spirit showing me how to do that with her. And so that was pretty amazing to watch God, how he works. But uh, Acts chapter 22, turn there in your Bibles, because I'm sure there's things in your life you need to get out. And you need to change. Now, obviously... The Bible says truth is what sets you free. So obviously truth is necessary to walk in freedom, but you also need to be able to recognize what the enemy's doing, you know, what you're doing, and to separate that, you need to be able to discern. Uh, that's what Romans chapter 12 says, to no longer be conformed to the uh, pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can test and approve what God's perfect will is for your life. You gotta know what to say yes to, what to say no to. Acts chapter 22, one of my favorite pictures this is about Paul. The crowd, this is verse 22 of chapter 22. The crowd listened to Paul until he said this. He was talking about accepting the Gentiles into the kingdom. The Jews didn't like that. Then they raised their voices and shouted, rid the earth of him. He's not fit to live. As they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust in the air, the commander ordered Paul to be taken into the barracks. He directed that he be flogged and questioned in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like that. As they stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, a phrase you must know how to handle. What is the phrase? Is it legal? Is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do, he said. This man's a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? He said, yes, I am. The commander said, I have had to pay a big price for my citizenship. Paul says, I was born a citizen. Those who are about to question Paul, what? What does it say? They withdrew how fast? Immediately, the commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chains. Now, this is a perfect example of how you need to handle the enemy. But you must know if it's legal. So you must know what's legal. 
But once you know what's legal, you need to take a stand against him and tell him to back off. And the Bible says he runs in terror. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Flee is the Greek word meaning terror. He runs in terror. This commander was nervous. He illegally was going to flog and chain Paul, even though he had not been tried and found guilty in a court of law. Now, this is how the, this is how the enemy operates. He finds lack of knowledge, tries to convince you he has a legal right, shows you no way out, brings up your past, brings up your whatever it is. He will try to condemn you every turn. And unless you know where you stand in Christ, you're going to take a trip you don't want to pay for. Take a trip you don't want to pay for. This is so cool how this turns out now. Looking at chapter 23, verse 12. So the next morning, we're still with Paul here. The Jews formed a conspiracy. They said, okay, this guy's not going to flog this guy. We got to get rid of this guy. We have to get rid of Paul. So they formed about 40 of them, uh, got together and said, we're not going to eat or drink until we kill him. All right, so we turn the page over here. Same chapter, 23. We find that a young man heard the plan. Heard, heard about this. Okay? So this young man went and told the commander what he had heard about this plan to kill Paul. Then in verse 23, this is important, 23, the commander calls two of his centurions, and ordered them, get ready a detachment of 200 soldiers. See, a centurion has 100 soldiers. Two centurions is 200 soldiers. 70 horsemen, 200 spearmen, to go to Caesarea at nine tonight, and provide a mount for Paul, so he may be taken what, how? Safely. Safely to Governor Felix. Now, here's the same people that were going to flog him are now concerned about his safety, giving him a mount to ride all the way to the court, and 470 soldiers to protect him on his way. Can you imagine what happens in the spirit realm? When you say, back off, back off, the other demons say, oh, no, and the other demons say, but you, can't, you can't touch him. And that's what happened. The same soldiers that were trying to flog him are now saying back off. Is that right? The same soldiers, same commander that said flog him are now saying back off. Satan has to back off. And he gets there in safety. And he went to court. See, you live in a legal system, friend. The kingdom of God is a legal system. It's a government. And you need to know how it operates legally. Your salvation is a legal issue. It's not a feeling issue. I've told you that many times. It's a legal issue. And you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You have legal rights. You need to know those rights. Satan is trying all he can to keep that hidden from you so that you, you don't know what your rights are and he can continue to kill, steal, and destroy and steal everything God has given you and what he wants to do in your life. But you must know how to stop him. 